Right, here we are. <laughs> and welcome everybody. Welcome to SportWorks Talks. My name is Christian Page and with me today is Coach Tatiana. Great to have you here, Tatiana. Thank you. Wonderful. Great to be here. It's great to be here in Lausanne, the Olympic capital. And once again, we're hosting another talk um, on a very important topic for women in sport. And we're looking at why, when, why men win, which... Sometimes. Sometimes. And not always. Not always. And we, we talked about this just before the start of the yes. program to say, well, maybe this is some inside information here for some of the men who may be watching today um, and maybe some get some tips on how they continue. Just kidding. I don't think that's the case. What This is a really important topic, and it's one that is very important to me as a father of uh, my son and my two daughters. I'm a husband, and, um, and I'm also a, a business partner with my, my team and my family. So it's important that this topic is always addressed, equality, and I'm really looking forward to hearing some of the insights from Tatiana today. So thank you again for joining us, and I'll hand over to Tatiana. Yes. Great to have you with us. Yes, thank you for this nice introduction, and also welcome from, from my side for all the women, ladies present here, uh, and also online, and of course all the men listening. This is a topic for everyone, and gender diversity is really a topic that everyone benefits, every team, um, every individual, uh, every culture as well. So it's not like a male bashing session. It's really a topic to raise awareness and to look really at the status of gender diversity today with a special, of course, attention to our favorite industry, which is sports. But before I start, I would like to ask uh, ladies a couple of questions. And uh, for instance, if you have ever been in a situation maybe in a meeting, maybe at the dinner table, where you are really struggling to, to get a word in because the air and the topic was completely dominated by men, one or several. And when you finally got to speak, you really felt under pressure to deliver your message really, really quickly because you knew that you would be interrupted very, very soon. And as a result, you knew that you actually didn't deliver this message as convincingly as you could have. Or maybe you applied for a job or a promotion where you knew that you've been 100% you're completely qualified for, you have 100% of the skills, just to find out that a maybe less competent colleague, a more junior male colleague got selected or maybe you even went to shop, which happens to me a lot, for sports equipment. And you want something really badass and cool. And everything that you find is pink and actually too small for you. Because, you know, the decision making in sports uh, companies think that to make it fit for women, they need to pink it and shrink it. So if, if you said yes to one or maybe to all of those questions, then you clearly faced an issue with gender diversity. And that's why we have this topic today. It's a big topic. We cannot embrace it all. We have only 20, 25 minutes. So I really selected a couple of topics and really the um, couple of questions. So I would really like to start with looking at the data. What is the status of gender equality or inequality today in business, in the world, in sports? And is it actually true that maybe there are just not enough women who are qualified for good slash big, well-paying jobs? And is it also true that women need to behave as men to win and to advance in their careers? And how about women in sports? What is the situation there? So let me start with a couple of uh, numbers and let us look really at places which are about power, about money, about taking big, important decisions. For instance, Fortune 500 companies, right? What we see, still vast, vast majority, 93% are run by men. In the UK, a little bit better, 83% of the top 100 companies are still run by men. Also, US you know, senior business roles in general, 86% run by men. We look at the NSC, our universe, National Olympic Committees. And by the way, the stats are not easy to come, to come by. They're not easy to find. 
94% of them are run by men. And this is a typical situation um, in the company, basically how female leadership trickles down with the progression in the career. So if you look at the bottom pyramid, and this is really a study that was done in S&P 500 companies in US, and very recently, January, um, so you already see that a little bit less women start. Next level, we lose eight, seven, eight percent of women in the first or like junior levels of uh, of management. Next level, more senior level, another ten percent drop. And I'll skip the board for a second. Let's look at top earners. You know who is taking the big check? Who's bringing the big check home? Only eleven percent. Uh, these are women, you know, the rest, of course, guys, right? And if you look at the very top of the pyramid, CEOs, so roughly 6%, again, you just saw it, um, are women. It looks a little bit better on the board level, so 21%. Why? Because, of course, the composition of boards attracts a lot of attention. They're being valued on it, of course, and there are a couple of, I guess, also quarter women there, too. So, we need to ask ourselves, we know many things have been, you know, have been implemented, many reforms have been done. So are women now more or even like, what is the equality? Like women more or less equal? And if you go to the next one, and we see that, yes, there, there's been some progress. 23 countries are run by women nowadays, either as a president or the head of state. There are also very important international organizations such as IMF, European Central Bank, UNESCO, U European Commission that are run by powerful women. And there's been a lot of gender equality reforms recently. If you, if this is the data from World Bank. Last 30 years across countries, 1,500 gender equality reforms, which is great. However, if you are looking for countries where I would say, okay, this is an example and a great role model for gender equality, we just find a few, and there's actually no real agreement what are the countries, so trend towards Nordics, Finland, maybe Norway, Denmark, these type of countries, but really it's a handful, not more. Um, there have been also huge progress in terms of representation of women in parliament, 25% sounds great, however, parliament is intended as actually should represent the population. So why not 50-50? And unfortunately, I have a feeling that these women in power also maybe couldn't or didn't do a good job in representing women rights as well, because at the same time, there's been a significant drop in women labor force participation. 3% on the global level, it's big, it means 3% women, they don't participate and they have no income, right? And this, of course, a huge, huge hit for gender equality worldwide. And surprisingly, we still have a pay gap. And I'm talking equal pay for equal job. In Europe, this very advanced place in terms of gender equality, we would think 16%, in France, 23%. So I don't think it's a, um, it's a picture that is really pretty and really, I think the world, it's still a man's world, right? We look at the power distribution, picture of uh, G2 says a lot. And also if you look at just a pure like monetary power, 95, we see 91% of billionaires are men. So political power, financial power is with men. So why is it so? We can ask ourselves, so maybe, maybe there are just not enough qualified women for good jobs, for big jobs. And if you assume that academic success has something to do with IQ and qualification, the picture is actually opposite. In, the, in Europe, like more than 50% of students are female, 60% of all academic titles, university degrees in US are held by women. And when women get to top positions, they actually do an amazing job. So there are individual studies that show 
that female CEOs do an equal or even better job than their male counterparts. They outperform markets, they outperform their industry. And it's been proven again and again and again that gender diversity and in general, diversity is good for business. Diverse team deliver better teams deliver better results. And, and this, it's not only in terms of engagement, but also in terms of financial output, in terms of their reputation across all the metrics. And women are also better leaders. So there's been this massive study done across thousands of managers on different levels in different countries, evaluating their 360 degrees evaluations. So when managers, so peers evaluate their peers, on different metrics of performance. And women outperform men sometimes significantly on 17 out of 19 factors of outstanding measures of outstanding leadership. And they are not only soft, touchy kind of engagement and um, like EQ type of metrics. They are metrics about financial performance, about decision making, and so on. And finally, you know, having more, more women means also having less wars in your organizations, but I think also globally. Now, example from my personal experience, which is, I would say, a good one. Um, I started my career at Procter & Gamble, a company, also a Fortune 500 company that is actually famous for talent development and retention. It's a company that used to do promotion from within. So uh, talent was really important. And entry in management really was equal, 50-50. Actually, when I started in Germany, I had more female colleagues than male who started uh, with me in, in marketing. Then, of course, next level senior management, maybe five, six, seven years in a row. Same picture, minus 10% of women, we lose them. Even next, le next level, vice president, again, 10% are gone. And the company is 180 years old in all this history. And this is a company that makes household products, baby diapers, uh, um, cleaning products, laundry detergents, cosmetics. It's basically products for women that are purchased by women and used by women. So that there's been zero female CEO. Um, and one of, it's actually a friend of mine, like a pinch top executive who said, well, it's really hard to believe that women actually get more stupid over time. You know, how it comes, right? Again, company that makes products for women that are purchased by women. And by the way, even blades and razors, 80% of them globally are bought by women for their men. So at least they were smart enough to put almost 50% of women on their board to enable this kind of female conformed decision making. And I would still consider it's a good example, right? But again, same picture, every five, 10 years, 10% women less and less, and pretty much zero at the top. Okay, so, and this is, I think, a um, picture that happens a lot in the world of business, and especially, I think, in sport, and maybe also in the army, because I think sports business is very much, yeah, like army sometimes. And really, statistics is, um, is difficult to find. Sometimes it's tricky, especially if you look gender diversity reports um, of federations or even IOC. Um, you need to, to read really the small print. Reality is different for everyone, I think, who came to a certain level in sports organization, they would agree. And what I did, I looked more in academia. So these guys, they are... Um, they're independent, they have no stakes in this whole thing, and they try to take an objective uh, view. And when you read just the key kind of the descriptors of the situation, you think really you're reading a report about like 18th century church maybe, like 
uh, type of institution, uh, gender hierarchy, male privilege, hegemonic masculinity, exclusionary power. Um, I think they describe the situation quite well. And also I look very good research. I really recommend, um, it's actually a meta research. So it's a research about research as a summary of all researches done in sports, leader, sports leadership. And well, it has to be named, of course, under representation of women in sports governing bodies, which read as a sport is a gendered institution with hegemonic masculinity as a norm. And scarcity of women is explained through stereotyping of leaders issues of discrimination and gender organizational structures. So it's not a pretty picture. And um, another study that I would really recommend uh, to, to have a look at was done uh, by Lowborough University, which is uh, actually a leading institution in terms of education of sports management, but also in terms of um, just academic research. And then identified um, seven barriers uh, for advance for advancement of women to the to senior roles to leadership roles in in sports and when you read them um actually i had to think about uh like I'll, I'll show this about the book that i like very, very much called dictator's headbook um why bad behaviors is almost all this good politics and it's basically the same barriers that you would uh, face if you would be running for a role in a small coalition dictatorial um, government. First of all, there's just a lack of candidates. Uh, why? Because, of course, they're intimidated by, well, this is here, barrier free, general assembly, electorate dominated by male presidents and secretary generals. And, um, of course, then what doesn't help that this, um, um, well, there's a nice expression in German, it's called Platzhirsch. It's a kind of a move that is sitting basically on the table, it's not moving, right? That these people, they just, there is no turnover, they don't move. They occupy their position for years and sometimes decades, which makes not, it's difficult to, to advance not only for, for women, but also for men. So there is real, real, like tiny turnover. And of course, post-election negative aspects of organizational culture. So post-election is the normal, this everyday situation, right? So again, um, masculine kind of culture, masculine norms, even communication, you look at the publications, it's, it's very, very, very male dominated type of environment and really makes it really difficult for women to, to advance. So why actually men win, not only in sports, but in general? And first thing um, is really about asking. So I read an interesting uh, piece of research that analyzed um, first offers. So the first offer that you get for a job or for promotion, 90% of men push back. They ask for more more money, for more status, for, for whatever comes with the job. On the contrary, 90% of women sign. They don't even ask. And I think this makes a huge, huge difference right at the start of your career. And in general, you know, ask, asking for help, you know, is, is, is a big deal. And the poach ideas, I also like, I have to ask women in the room and uh, the, if you ever also experienced the situation where actually a woman in the group in the meeting suggests something and is completely ignored. And then a couple of minutes later, uh, her male colleague repeats the same idea, maybe a little bit more forcefully, with a bit more testosterone in his voice. And the idea is suddenly brilliant. And it happens again and again. And this is really a common practice, I have to say. Um, and well, the network, and I, you, you had the discussion with Celine about the importance of, of networking earlier this week. I also don't like networking as a term, you know, I put it in brackets. I would say it's more about like sticking together and building, building strategic alliances and coalitions in terms of, you know, 
I pat your back, you pat my back, you know, type of positive tit for tat, negotiation, helping each other, promoting each other, you know, helping each other, promoting um, friends, um, yeah, and people from, from your network, basically. And another point is maybe a little bit, you know, controversial. I say, like, they don't strive for a balance of life, more in the sense that they can do it because they get help in the household. You know, this every five, six years, why women drop out? Because they stay at home. Because And, and this time, of course, they can help their men to advance, in the, to advance in the career, and they lose very, very valuable time that's then impossible to, to catch up later. And finally, they're just more self-confident. And I think this has a little bit of physiological explanation. If you move to the next slide, I love it. Um, about self-confidence. So this is women assessing themselves about their self-confidence. So sorry, it is a pink line here. Um, so, and you see this gap and make gray, so pink versus gray, 20% difference. Like in the early, like in the 20s, women, in spite of all the academic achievement, in spite of having more titles, more experience, actually being more mature with 25, they still think of themselves as kind of inferior and not self-confident. And it takes them 25 years to realize that actually that's, that's a faulty assumption. Um, fascinating. Second slide is about own assessment of leadership quality qualities, right? And now, like I told you about women being superior in terms of leadership, 17 out of 19 factors, still they judge themselves as not, like they perceive themselves as not being really good leaders and much worse than men. And again, it takes them a long time, couple of decades to to get this confidence that actually I'm a good leader, I can, I can work with people, I can lead them. So fascinating, and this is really only in your head. That's all. So now, moving on to what actually women can do about it. Um, and I would say almost not opposite of what men, men do, but first of all, and it's a big and easy thing, ask, ask. And you can start practicing on your cat if you if you want, right? Or on your husband, on your uh, no, on your teddy bear. Ask for everything: for promotion, for time, for massage, for uh, like help. It's very very important. As I say, ask and you will be given. If you never ask. You know, nobody will think about you not having enough time to, you know, do things. Second, network strategically. Really build coalitions. Be more like, like create a girls club. So help each other, really. Um, like guys do it, you know. Like you don't have to play golf for that, but really helping each other, getting maybe a powerful mentor in the organization, male or female, you know, and also network strategically. And very important, especially for women, is about is set boundaries. Set boundaries, how far you let certain, like, macho male in your organization, how far you let them go. Set boundaries, how far the job gets into your life. Because women are more susceptible, I think, to, to burnout. I hear a lot of cases of burnouts, um, among sports workers in Lausanne, more actually women than men, because they have double, triple load. It's the job, it's the family, children, and you need also to take care of yourself. So setting boundaries across all areas is, is, is really key to kind of keep sanity in, in this world as well, right? Yeah, and of course, lead like a woman. Don't try to, to, to act like a man. I think this is where all the negative... Um, kind of connotation of feminism is coming from. Women are natural leaders. They need to embrace their style and, the need, and, and not just leverage all those skills that, that, that they have. 
and yes, and be aware of our own biases, you know, like we do have a very kind of masculine culture in, in general, and sometimes we don't notice. So how many times I heard from women in business that they said, I actually prefer working with men. And I think this is a little bit outrageous, you know, because if we prefer working with men, then who prefers working with us? Um, and yeah, be feminist. Feminist is someone who really like things that genders are equal. Be, be feminist. There is nothing wrong about it. There is, a, there is no taste or any connotation. You know, lean in. I don't know if you like the book by Sheryl Sandberg, maybe I don't agree with everything, but really embrace it. You know, be courageous, be, be brave, just go for it. Ask and, you know, you'll be given. And yeah, the self-confidence point, you know, remember the two curves and remember that there is absolutely no reason for you to feel any way inferior to anyone in general, I think. And get help at home, you know, talk to your, to your boyfriend, talk to your husband, uh, maybe if your children are um, old enough, split, split the chores or find, or find someone to do it for you, you know, pay for it, you know, if you can afford it. So, but get help. Yeah. And finally, build, I think building skills is very important, especially now the world is changing, becoming more and more technological. The top 10 professions smell like IT big time. And this is where women have some internal barriers to, to go into this profession. So for your daughters, you know, they should study something like maybe software, software engineering or whatever it is, is in in 10 years. Um, and, and really with this, maybe one day we'll come to a society that is really gender mature. And um, I took this chart from, from actually also former uh, colleague who wrote a book also about you know women moving forward and, and advancing in their careers. So if I start from the bottom, which is all about kind of recent Me Too uh, movement, uh, no like sexism, no physical harassment. Um, I think this is quite obvious. But I think the more you move up on this on this kind of, it's not a pyramid, but it's a move up, the more difficult I think it becomes because you need to create infrastructures to support women so they can really, you know, have this, um, like, life at home and at work without uh, huge compromises. About equal pay, this should be actually easy. It's like really a mystery to me why we are still not there. And really 50-50 share of all jobs. So it's actually also for men that they are not stigmatized for working in kind of coded female professions as well. So um, as I said, uh, gender equality is, is good for everyone. And also that we try to really control ourselves and control our thinking and our kind of spontaneous reactions in terms of just our unconscious biases toward men and uh, dominant male culture. I think we all need to be trained, especially people who work in sport. I see a lot of communication um, that is clearly written by men for women using certain images. It's a, it's a very, very male, male kind of um, culture in general. So just maybe a personal story, a couple of years ago, I was actually flying to a cycling, um, not a race, but Traverse of Dolomites, and I picked a magazine, cycling magazine was their first edition at Geneva Airport, and I was sitting in the lounge and going for it, and I'm like, something is wrong with it, you know? Like, big, fat edition, and like, there was, and then I realized there was not a single picture of a woman on a bike. And I used to be a professional cyclist. And then I read the first article and the title already kind of tough climbs for tough guys. And I'm like, okay, you're going to get it now, right? <laughs> and, and it was their first edition. Yeah? So I sent them a letter, explained how it feels. And by the way, how much they're missing, but not embracing the huge target group of women who also bike. And, uh, well, this is nothing in return, I apologize. You're going to do it better. So, okay, I made sure that I bought the next edition. 
And of course, that was really pink it and shrink it approach. There was a picture of a girl, I think on the left, electric bike and wearing a skirt, something like this, right? So not badass at all. And I'm like, okay, so that was the last time. Uh, but, you know, so these are the things that you can do. And things that we have in sports, we have to, to be really vigilant, vigilant about and not perpetuating this type of, you know, male uh, domination because a lot of our fans are women. Half of our athletes are women as well. So maybe one day when all these a green, we we can arrive at the, at the at the state of real gender maturity and more chances actually for for both for both genders. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Wonderful. Um, quite disturbing in many ways. Um, the presentation really was weighted and, and you presented it with such great facts and figures to demonstrate the work that needs to be done. Yeah. Um, and thank you for doing the, pulling all that together because I think it really does help to tell the story mm -hmm. and also to explain what we need yeah. to do. Um, but a really great topic and really great chat coming in on the, on the, on the online here and uh, really appreciate the inputs and the sharing that's going on there. Um, so I'm gonna share some of those comments. Um, but, you know, overall, like I say, Bit over, a bit overwhelming to see the, the gap. Um, and I think there's, it's, but as you say, we need to do something about it and we can action it. And there is some key starting points and it's mm. great that you're able to share them with, it's great as a man to hear what you're sharing because it, it gives it a context for me to think about how do I engage with mm -hmm. them? How do I yeah. as a business leader yes. or as, how do I as a father ever mm -hmm. say start? These are important aspects of what uh, we need to do to take it into um, the next level, let's say, to yep. improve. Um, you also made a great point, and it was um, something that uh, Nadia Bonjour shared about mm -hmm. language. Yeah. And that was such an important takeaway for me um, from the very beginning. Yeah. It's, it's what we say, um, mm -hmm. thoughts, words, and deeds, yes. as we say, yes. um, how we think it yes. frames it. And that has certainly had an impact on me and how I communicate. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just that that consciousness, and I think that's part of the evolution as well. The yes. change. So, yeah, there are some great points. I was just saying, you know, the narrative of what yeah. we say, um, the importance of asking. Yeah, yeah, I love that point. It's a simple, um, straightforward, but it is that risk in asking, yeah. asking for help, or asking for support, or asking for. Mm -hmm. And I think, as and I'll look again, I can flip it from the male perspective. You know, our ability to listen to when what's being asked for yes. as well. It, yeah. It's a it's important to understand how to support yeah. um, because I understand that that picture of the three three career the, the career the the mum the, mm -hmm. the the business leader it's a, it's a complicated mix yes so. and of course there is no guarantee that you are going to get what you're asking for of course. but if but. you keep asking you know like you clearly increase your chances that's yes. for sure that's Absolutely. for sure in life. Be like yes. a three-year-old. Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> yes. Ask, 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 ask. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to jump into some of the, the comments here. Um, so I just want to say that there's some great sh comments um, and some shares about some groups. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Laura, Laura Maria. Uh, you shared the group here about gender equality for like-minded people on LinkedIn. That's a really great point. Um, a question here from Justine. Thanks for mm -hmm. the question, Justine. Uh, what kind of tools exist to actually educate colleagues and administrators in sport? Uh, because whenever we try to talk about this, jokes and mm -hmm. uncomfortable silences really fly in. It's true. So yeah. it's, it's knowing any ideas or suggestions and where to... Well, um, of course you can send them to some trainings. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, the message is better received if it's coming maybe from like third party independent. Yeah. For instance, here IMD does great courses uh, to empower women yes from, from female leaders but i uh, attended a couple of the sessions um, they also talk about a lot you know like leadership and how diverse teams uh, operate how to manage them so yeah if you have a chance and some budget send send your manager to a training yes okay. good tip thank you for that um a great comment here from uh, from meg thanks yeah very right tachana not asking for help is a big issue 
I would say for men, it's even more challenging. I probably do. Okay. <laughs> yes. Ask you how to help. Um, it's great fielding. Uh, about building coalitions, I'm not sure how many women here are aware, but there are a few monitoring programs for women ongoing. Um, mm -hmm. going on. Uh, SEGA is starting one now focused on sports industry. Yes. It's a nice way to start building relations. Others facing the same issues, I think. Yeah. Um, so Siga, are you familiar with that organization? Mm, not no, not spontaneously, but I think what, what you are doing here in Lausanne is actually a great platform also for women to to men and of course like for men as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Because I think that it's uh, everyone benefits from it. And uh, you know, working like together, but also yeah, having maybe some some female groups is is is, is I mean that's a great platform as well. Yeah. yeah. I know for me, and I speak for this, that mm -hmm. the experience and what I've learned from just hosting mm -hmm. these, this series um, has taught me tremendous amounts. And mm -hmm. I know I'm guilty of it. I've worked in this industry for a long time, many mm -hmm. years. And to become aware, I think one of the reasons we are mm -hmm. we miss some of this understanding is because we are busy doing it. Yeah. And it can, it's not an excuse, it's not a reason, mm -hmm. but it's, it's just demonstrating that for me personally, I've found it yeah. incredibly valuable to sit and have these conversations with you mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. many of my colleagues to learn about these topics. So I think it's like yeah. to say, it, this is again a great opportunity for us to, yes, to share and learn. Share and learn. And I think also um, encouraging and endorsing feedback culture in, yeah. in organizations is, is very important because it's really, you don't know what you don't know, right? And you don't know how what you say makes me feel. Right, and if I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to learn. Right, so what I found, no, like in sports organization, there is no culture of feedback. Okay, it all goes one way predominantly from your superior to you know, yeah. like all like top down. There is nothing that goes bottom up, but also between peers, really. Yeah. And sometimes it's not necessary. The boss is being a jerk. Sorry, your colleagues, you no, know, or even your suppliers, just just you know, give some like constructive feedback. And I think the best way how to do it is really to tell someone how it makes you feel. Yeah, communication. Yes, we had a, we've done a, an upcoming podcast talks about toxic environments. Mm -hmm. and one of the, one of the key mm -hmm. elements with that was communication. Yes, uh, really key yeah. point. Yes. So yeah, completely aligned. Uh, so a question here. Um, so a more philosophical question. If you'd have unlimited resources, how would you choose to spend them to achieve gender gender parity in the sports world? What would be your approach? Oh, I love philosophical questions. So <laughs> I think it's actually Thank you for that <laughs> it's it's uh, it's also a very practical one. But to be honest, you know what's happening in the sports world it has very much to do with the governance structure and with the history so i think incremental like step by step uh baby kind of baby steps measures will take roughly like 250 years um yeah more or less um so i think more drastic things um have has have to happen like like maybe limiting the term you know like you can't stay in your director position for more than five years and this would be already a very helpful one for, for men and women because um, that, that would bring some turnover, some fresh ideas. And maybe if you are lucky, you'll get an enlightened person in this position who will really um, yeah, like, yeah, help the changes really implement them and be a role model. Yeah. Okay. So um, another question here, Tatiana, what do you think of the IOC gender equality review project that only had pictures of females? <laughs> Is that helping us to achieve gender balance? I mean, it's always good to do something than to do absolutely yeah. nothing. Yeah. So I read this report and just, I mentioned that you have to read it with a little bit, you know, like read the small print. Just an example, there is a number in this report, 94% of um, heads of international federations are men, so means 6% women. You're like, oh, I don't know any. And then you read in small print that, oh, it also includes recognized federations, okay. which are squash, cheerleading, chess, and so on. This is where you have this 5%, but I'm not aware of any, and by the way, 
I've been really, and correct me some if I'm wrong, but yeah. percentage of uh, female presidents of IF, Google will not tell you. I think it's 100%. Okay. 100%. Interesting. Man. So, with, so to that point, I got a question from the room. Sorry. Yes. Asado, yes. Yes. Excellent. Triathlon. Yes, 99%. Yes. Good. 99%. 99%. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. 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 So we've still, got, we've, we've still got a gap there, right? So okay. Uh, a little bit. A little Just bit. Me. All right. Um, yes, that's right. Thank you, Sergey. Triathlon and curling are headed by brilliant women. Spot on. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Good. Yeah. Well done. There we go. We've got 98. You know, give more, you know, like I'm happy yeah, for this bag, you know, yeah, keep, 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 you know. Um, yeah, so there we go, from our, to, to our presidents and trials next week. Mm -hmm. So um, another comment here, uh, what is your personal opinion of the use of feminist causes to increase particular markets? Uh, in other words, it is about the support of big brands to gender equality issues in, you know, how far is it positive and when this move starts to be excluding a negative. Good question, right? and that would be my personal opinion. And as long as it's authentic, I think yes. it's good. You know, so if big brands um, engage uh, in supporting women, that it, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, there was a very nice campaign. Picture that was the brand I started my career in Procter and Gamble on. Always feminine protection. Okay. Play like a girl. Okay. A really type of testimonial uh, campaign, check it out. So actually, it was Olympic uh, campaign as well, okay. about, um, yeah, like girls, uh, 12, 13 years old, you know, they're just asking the question, you know, how, how, what is it running like a girl means for you? Can you show me? Like, check it out. I mean, it's, okay. so this is very authentic thing. Um, and I think the more it's done, the, yeah, the better it is. So yeah. Yeah. A positive, a positive, a positive input. Yes. I, as you say, I think it's making an awareness, and awareness mm -hmm. is part of that process. Yes. And if we can increase the awareness, then there is value. Um, marketing often uses the term "there's no such thing as bad publicity." Um, don't always agree with that intensity in the context, yeah. but I think it is important to get this particular topic on the table. If we yes. can get the support of big brands, and if big brands are watching, uh, mm -hmm. look, there is men, there's much room here. Uh, yes. So I want to say thank you um, very much for joining us. Thank you My so pleasure. much for the My conversation. Pleasure. My pleasure. Pleasure. As I said, super important topic for all of us, all of us in sport, but not just in sport, in globally. I think it's, it's, it's essential yeah. we address this. And we find the baby steps that we can each take individually um, and for the organisations that we represent or work with or teams. Um, for me personally, I thought one of the great tips was just thinking about my language um, and how that impacts uh, the teams and the people I work with. Mm -hmm. um, especially the women in my in my in my working life and my in my home and career. So, thank you again. Thank my you pleasure. all for joining us online. Yes. Thank you for your great questions and your great input. Thanks for all those links as well. We'll make sure that we share them on the platform in the forum. Um, and for now, be safe and uh, think of the baby steps you can take uh, to to lead this this uh, change in uh, what we're facing here with gender equality. And yeah, great stuff. Thanks everyone. Bye for now. Yes.